My name is Ryan Johnson. I'm a staff architect in the Integrated Systems Business Unit here at VMware. We're focused on the Software Defined Data Center and the hybrid cloud. In today's Lightboard, I want to talk about how VMware Cloud Foundation uniquely enables the hybrid cloud for organizations. To set context, we're going to talk about the on-premises or private cloud, as well as the public cloud space, or what I like to call the multi-cloud. So we'll set context by first all talking about what's happening on the private cloud or the on-premises. You know, today, you know, customers and organizations are deploying applications because at the end of the day, it's all about the apps that run the businesses, for most organizations, that is. And those applications can be traditional applications or bespoke applications that customers have deployed or now even new 12-factor native, uh, cloud-native applications. But the point is they're running on top of infrastructure that's providing that platform for those applications to run and then, of course, provide value back to the business. Uh, the, this, can be, this infrastructure can be done in a couple ways. It can be the traditional build it your own. It could be converged infrastructure or even hyper-converged infrastructure. But what happens oftentimes is that these different infrastructures can become silos of their own to run specific applications. Maybe it's a specific application for a database or a mission critical, critical application like an ERP system. But the point is they become very fragile, very fragmented, creating these silos. And not only just silos of infrastructure, you can also see silos of management, automation, orchestration, managing capacity, managing monitoring, alerting, et cetera, within the system, right, or across systems. It becomes very challenging for organizations, again, to deliver the services to the business to run those applications because that's what matters. Now, over here on the public cloud space, some of the same challenges also apply. Because it's a multi-cloud world, there's all kinds of providers providing cloud services. Again, to run applications, those maybe bespoke applications, custom applications, SaaS applications, new 12-factor cloud-native applications. But sometimes, and often many times, those applications are built around the cloud provider's infrastructure or the services that are built within there. And what that means is maybe that service provider is providing a specific type of database service or specific type of storage services. The apps are built within the confines of the cloud and may never be able to move back and forth. And they may never be able to integrate with other clouds. And that's a challenge. Again, this creates a same similar type silo, uh, cloud silos and challenges as you see on the private cloud space. And those challenges could be management, the automation, the orchestration, could be the capacity management, log analytics, monitoring, alerting, et cetera, right? But we need to be honest here and say, you know, in today's world, this multi-cloud world, it's also not a matter of if a customer will move to the public cloud space, it's more of a matter of when and how can they move to the public cloud space and really bridge this gap and create a hybrid cloud. And so VMware Cloud Foundation is uniquely solving that with our architecture. So let's talk about how we're doing that. And we'll first start here on the on-premises side in the private cloud space. And when I think of VMware Cloud Foundation, I like to think of it in, in terms of services. We provide services to the organization to provide infrastructure to the business and applications. And the first service is compute virtualization. Now, everyone pretty much knows what compute virtualization is today. It's basically, we're using the power of a well-known and industry-leading hypervisor, vSphere, today to provide the ability to abstract, pull, and automate the x86 hardware in software to run, you know, via virtual machines, to run guest OSs, and of course put workloads on top of that to run those applications. But we move beyond just storage, uh, com uh, compute virtualization, and we move on to storage virtualization. And VMware Cloud Foundation provides that through the power of vSAN. Now vSAN gives us the ability to take flash devices, as well as magnetic disk, or all flash devices, and put them into the host, or the hypervisor here, and then create, by abstracting, pulling, and automating those disks, now we can create a distributed data store for the applications that need to run on top of the stack. From there, we can also provide other interesting things, such as storage policy-based management. Here, using vSAN and uh, storage policy-based management, we can apply policies to workloads that are running in the stack, for things such as performance and other capabilities. Now we move on for beyond compute and storage, and the next layer is network and security. <clears throat> and network and security services are provided by the power of NSX. And here we are able to provide layer two through layer seven services in software, in the software stack. 
And we do that by providing things such as log distributed, logical, sw distributed uh, logical firewalling, distributed switching, distributed networking, uh, firewalls, etc. All at layer two through layer seven services here in software with the power of NSX. But you know, some customers could go out there and get all the pieces of vSphere, vSAN, NSX, pick the hardware, and deploy that and configure that. And it, it oftentimes that's very time consuming. And in the day, the business doesn't care about how long it takes you, you know, to build that and the, the process. They want those services fast, right? And how can we make this super simple for you to do things such as deployment and configuration and get up and running and deliver those applications? And VMware Cloud Foundation solves that through a piece of software built into Cloud Foundation called SDDC Manager. And SDDC Manager pretty much has four jobs it does as a workflow engine in Cloud Foundation. You know, SDC Manager is a workflow engine. It has very specific tasks. And if you think about all the tasks that you would have to do manually to deploy vSphere or even script yourself to deploy this, it's very time consuming. But SDC Manager can do it for you. And those four pieces that it really does amazingly well are deployment. It can deploy the software stack and prepare the host to receive this management stack and then consume these services. Through a power of configuration, the next step is by providing a set of parameters to SDDC Manager in its interface, you can provide things such as your name and IP addresses and VLANs you need to use, and it will go and configure the entire stack for you in amazingly fast time. Now beyond that, once we've deployed the stack, we've got everything initially configured, now it's time to start consuming that and delivering those applications and workloads or put that behind a cloud management portal. And that's what it also does. It has ability through policy-based provisioning to determine things like performance, availability, expand, contract your environment as you need to. And lastly, it has a very powerful piece of lifecycle management, or what I like to call the ability to patching and updating in an automated fashion. SDC Manager has the ability to talk out to my VMware. And it can download bundles because of bundles of software. And those bundles of software are updates to the stack. Think about when a new version of vSphere comes out, a new version of vSAN or NSX. Because SDC Manager knows what we deployed, what we configured, the versions of the entire stack from vSphere, vSAN, NSX, and itself, we're now able to automatically update that using the power of its lifecycle management capabilities. And that could be done by administrator. Uh, you could say, I want to deploy this now, up, do an update of SDC Manager, or vSAN, or whatever is in the bundle, and be able to pro programmatically say, I want to do it now, couple clicks, your hands off, and you watch the process run. Or if you want, you can schedule that, say, at Saturday at 3 a.m. Now, this uniquely solves the challenges of bringing up the infrastructure really, really super fast here on the private cloud space. But how can Cloud Foundation do that on the public cloud space? And we can do that in the exact same manner. We provide Cloud Foundation in a service provider model. And it provides the compute services with vSphere, provides the same primary storage capabilities, storage policy-based management with vSAN, and it also provides those layer two through layer seven network and security services here in software with NSX. But how do I deploy this? Well, from that, we use SDDC Manager as well. So from here, a customer will contact the cloud provider, the service provider, using their portal. Most, customer, most cloud providers will have a portal, right? You'll log in, provide your authentication, your keys, and what happens is the cloud management, the cloud portal from a, custom, uh, from a service provider will talk to their cloud and then instantiate SDDC Manager using its APIs, right? By using the power of the SDDC Manager's APIs, we're now then able to do the same task that we did on premises, but do that in a public cloud space and instantiate the entire stack, vSphere, vSAN, and NSX using all those components, compute virtualization, storage services, and network and security services. So this gives us a unique opportunity because at the end of the day, we have the exact same stack. It's the same stack deployed on-premises and in the public cloud space. 
So now we can do even more interesting things because it is the same stack. Things such as workload migration or workload movement. And because it's the same v vSphere VMs, you know, you have policies and you have policies on storage and networking, now you can move workloads between the two. But another powerful piece of this, because it's using the same platform, you have NSX here. And NSX is going to give you those layer, again, layer two through layer seven network and security services. So you can do cool things like stretched network. What we mean by that is now these apps can have the same layer two networks on both sides. So you can deploy an application here on premises, one in the public cloud space, and they can have the same L2 segments. You don't have to change IP addresses as you move them back and forth if you want to. You don't have to change DNS entries, uh, which is a very powerful capability because you don't have to do all that manual work. Applications are available to free flowly, and you can have the same policies on both sides. Now this is a VMware Cloud Foundation stack, again, on premises, as well as the public cloud space with service providers, such as IBM Bluemix, uh, VMware, VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, and VMware Cloud, uh, vCloud Air Network of Partners that are coming. So with this stack, the next step is how can we take this a little bit higher? And to do that, we're going to add the power on the top of the hybrid cloud with vRealize Suite. So what does vRealize Suite offer us? vRealize Suite has the ability to do blueprints. That's a good blueprint. Has the ability to do blueprints, or a self-service portal, if you will, and a service catalog, where users can talk, so the users can talk to the portal and say, I want a blueprint. I want to deploy a application workload. Maybe it's a, a single tier applications, maybe it's multi-tier applications, what have you, but they can be defined, uh, defined as services inside of vRealize uh, Suite, uh, specifically vRealize Automation. And from here, those blueprints can then be deployed on premises or to the public cloud space on top of VMware Cloud Foundation. We also get other capabilities through the automation orchestration. We also get things such as governance, right? Approval policies. So, you know, is that, is that a, a valid request? I can approve it. I can disprove it. Um, provide governance policies. For, for, for example, providing policies of say, hey, after vRealize Suite, I want to say, you know, I want to move a workload through vRealize Suite and instantiate a orchestration workflow that says move that system from the on-premises to the public cloud, but they're using the power of X as a service. Now I can say provide some governance capabilities. From there, you can see things such as monitoring and alerting, right? We can look at things such as monitoring, alerting. We can look at capacity management, health, risk, and efficiency using the power of vRealize operations that are built, in, built into the vRealize Suite. We can use vRealize business on top to look at IT costing. Is it more, more um, conducive for me to run the apps on premises or either on the public cloud space and the values between those? And lastly, we can also look at things such as log management. And this is a macro, uh, magnifying glass, but we can start doing things like looking at log aggregation, log analytics, et cetera, maybe for compliance or just for last mile of root cause if an issue um, happens in our, in our environment. So this is the entire power of VMware, VMware Cloud Foundation, a unified stack or integrated stack for the hybrid cloud. We have the same experience on-premises. We have the same experience uh, in the public cloud space. We're able to map everything together using the power of the vRealize Suite through its capabilities of a cloud management platform, costing, monitoring, alerting, log analytics, and log aggregation. Now, if you'd like to learn more about VMware Cloud Foundation, please visit the link here at the bottom, and thanks for your time. Yeah.